Josh Haston here, Israel Uncensored, on the Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com, recording for Monday, December 3rd, 2018, the 25th of Kislev, 5779. Happy Hanukkah to all of our listeners around the world who celebrate the holiday of Hanukkah. I hope it is a truly joyous festival. Don't forget, you can always get in touch with me during the week, josh at thelandofisrael.com. On Facebook, it's Joshua Haston, and on Twitter, at Josh Haston. So on today's program, I am going to play a lecture which was given just the other day here in Israel by Daniel Pipes, the president of the Middle East Forum and publisher of Middle East Quarterly. He spoke at the Begin Sadat Center for Strategic Studies at Bar Ilan University. The title of his talk was Why Israel Needs to Win and the Palestinians to Lose. So Daniel Pipes has a movement, let's call it a movement, called the Israel Victory Project. And he says that before Israel can reach any type of agreement with the Arabs in Judea and Samaria, whether you're in favor of a one-state solution or a two-state or whatever your vision is, Jordan is Palestine or whatever it is, he says that first, before anything meaningful can happen, the Arabs have to recognize the Jewish state of Israel is here, it's here to stay, it's a reality. The Arabs must recognize also that they lost. They lost the war. They lost the war in 48. They lost the war in 67. And Israel is the victor. And until the Arabs uh, acknowledge that fact, that Israel is here to stay, uh, we're just going to keep going down the same spiral of peace process after peace process with no end in sight. He believes that it's critical not only for the Jews, but for the Arabs of this area to acknowledge Israel's here to stay. Israel won. It's an Israeli victory and the Arabs lost. And then we can move on from there. So without further ado, here is Daniel Pipes. I'm a historian. And as a historian, I've noticed that wars end when one side gives up. It's actually quite intuitive. So long as you and I are each ready to fight the other, the fight goes on. When I give up, you win, the fight's over. Uh, there are many examples of this through history. One particularly obvious one is World War I and World War II. The Germans lost in World War I, but their cities were standing, their armies were still uh, effective, and so they didn't believe they really lost, and so they tried again. And the second time they tried, the Allies realized they had to convince them that they had lost, and it worked. And no one in Germany or Japan or Italy or elsewhere has said, let's go and try a third time. So with that in mind as background, I've been watching since 1999 the Israeli-Palestinian diplomacy and its problems. And I concluded that there are two different ways of seeing this conflict. There's the conventional one, the one has, that has been in place since 25 years ago in the Oslo Accords, and it presumably will still be in place again when the Trump plan is revealed, which basically tries to please the Palestinians. It is essentially appeasement. It is essentially saying, here, Palestinians, take this and leave Israel alone. Uh, it hasn't worked, clearly. And more efforts to make it happen will not work, just as the Kerry effort did not work a few years ago, so the next effort will not work. And that's because of something deep, which is what I call Palestinian rejectionism, which goes back close to a century, can be most easily dated to the appointment of Haj Amin al Hosseini in 1921. Uh, the rejectionism was far more severe then than today, but it's still there. A un, an unwillingness to accept the Zionism, the Yeshu, the State of Israel. No, no, no. Now, during this century, I would argue that roughly 20% of the people we now call Palestinians have accepted Israel, Yeshu, Zionism, 
and been willing to deal with it. But the large majority has not been willing to do so. And if present trends continue, they will still not be willing to accept Israel. So something new is needed. As I said, for almost 20 years, I've been brooding on this topic. And I've come up with the idea of Israel victory, which is to convince the Palestinians that they have lost, that there is no hope. They are a miniature version of Germany, Japan, Italy, and other defeated states in 1945. That they must recognize the Jewish state in order for progress to take place. I see the Palestinians a little like Hiro Onada. Anybody know who Hiro Onada was? He was the Japanese soldier who continued to fight oh, yeah. until 1974. And it seems like a bit of a joke, but it wasn't. He was on a Philippine island, and for 29 years, from 1945 to 1974, he was destroying property, stealing property, and killing people, perhaps one person a year. It was not funny. It was serious. And finally, his superior officer was brought to the island and told him, lay down your arms. The emperor tells you to end the war, and he did. But the Palestinians are a little bit like that. It is clear, and it's almost the same amount of time, that they, they acknowledged defeat in 1993 on the White House lawn. They acknowledged that they couldn't win, and yet they continue on and on. Now, why do they do so? They do so, I think, for three reasons. One is Islamic doctrine, the notion of a waqf, the notion of a territory that is once Muslim, controlled, must always be Muslim controlled. And this is a powerful idea that uh, in, gives uh, spirit to the notion of samud, of steadfastness, that inevitably this territory, and this is not just any territory, but a holy territory, will return to Muslim rule. Secondly, the Palestinians are enthused by the fact that they have worldwide support, unique worldwide support. This is not some obscure African Liberation Front that no one's heard of. This is the cause that gets more resolutions in the General Assembly of the United Nations than, any, than the rest of the world combined. Uh, in, I think, the past decade, there were 68 resolutions concerning Israel and 67 about the rest of the world. Uh, in departments of, of universities, in, on the streets of major cities, uh, the Palestinians have a support that is unique in the world. That's two. So first is the doctrine, Islamic doctrine. Second is international support. And third, I would argue, perhaps more controversially, is Israeli policy. Uh, Israeli policy towards the Palestinians over the past decades, say since 1993, has been timid, soft, cautious, defensive, uh, and has led the Palestinians to think that they are winning. Uh, Israeli policy, the security establishment, the IDF, Mossad, Shin Bet, police, border police, and so forth, have treated the Palestinians in a very cautious way, fearful of another intifada, fearful of the Palestinian Authority collapsing, fearful of having to take over and supply food, medicine, water, energy, security. And so the security services have been very, very cautious. And this is the third reason, I think, the Palestinians have a sense of optimism, that no matter how bad things look today, in fact, they will eventually win. It is that spirit, just as Hiru Onada thought on his Filipino island, for 29 years that he was part of the imperial force that eventually would win, it is that misguided spirit that needs to be broken. The, the Israeli government, I believe, should seek victory over the Palestinians. The Palestinians need to be defeated. Now these are words that are not normally used in modern discourse, modern Western discourse. We do not talk of victory and defeat. Palestinians do. Uh, in Syria they do, in Libya they do, in Yemen they do, but not in Israel, not in the West, more broadly. The word has disappeared. 
I have a uh, search engine. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, I, I put in the words Israel Victory into the new search engine. And it's quite amusing because it either is 1967 or it is Eurovision. <laughs> Those are the Israel victories. Nothing in the past 70 years except for, or 50 years, since uh, a song. And I think this points to the disappearance of this notion of victory. And yet, again, as a historian, if you look at the history of warfare going back millennia, it's always been about victory. If you go to Sun Tzu, if you go to Clausewitz, if you go to Douglas MacArthur, you will see they all talk about victory. There's no doubt that victory is the goal. Wars end when one side gives up. It doesn't matter what the weapons are. Victory is defined as imposing your will on the enemy so the enemy no longer tries to achieve his war aims. I personally lived through such a defeat on May 1st, 1975, when the United States lost in Vietnam. It was a complete defeat. We did not run out of dollars. We did not run out of bullets. We did not run out of manpower. We ran out of will, and we lost. And no one in the United States has since, in the 43 years that followed, said, let's try it again. Let's go back. It's over. We lost. So I've had a personal experience of defeat. Now, the uh, timidness on the part of the Israeli security services has meant that time and again uh, the Israeli response to Palestinians has been weak. We saw this just two weeks ago. 469 missiles and rockets, and yet it cost nothing to Hamas. A ceasefire was agreed upon. Same thing with the kites and the balloons earlier this year. Same thing a year and a bit ago with the Temple Mount murders. Uh, again and again, while the public and the politicians want to do something, in general, the security service says, says no, don't do this. And I would say that is the number one obstacle to an Israeli victory. The security services, to my surprise, when I started looking at this topic, I thought it would be merits and the left. No. They don't really count. It's the security service who are so important and so reluctant to take any step that will signal to the Palestinians that there's a price to pay. It is unimaginable that the security services would agree that when a missile comes over from Gaza or Lebanon or any other action, uh, hostile action, that some retribution take place, that the water, the food, the energy, the medicine, something be cut off. It's unheard of. So uh, the, the, the situation goes on and on. The Palestinians have this optimism, and the Israeli security establishment <clears throat> has this pessimism, and nothing basically. And the outside world be believes that more talks will solve the problem. So what I and my organization are proposing is a shift. The shift that starts here where Israelis seek victory and then moves to the United States where the American government, the American president says, yes, that's what we do. We win our wars through victory. You do the same. And finally goes to the Palestinians who are forced to understand that the war is over and they lost. Now, there are a couple of interesting um, implications of this approach. The first is that we are solution agnostic. We are not in favor of one state, two states, three states. We're not calling for sovereignty in the West Bank. We're not, I see a number of friends here, we're not uh, in advocating the humanitarian paradigm or the Emirates or the Jordan is Palestine or the new state solution. All of them are fine. Well, not the one state solution, but the others are fine. Not Jordan is Palestine, but the others are fine. Not really new state solution either. <laughs> but anyway, some of them are fine. Uh, we're not advocating any of those. But we're saying that whatever your goal is, whatever your plan is, it's a good idea to have the Palestinians accept Israel. That would be helpful, no matter what your 
specific planets. And by the way, it's helpful for the left as well. It means, in leftist terms, ending the occupation. It means not having to have guards and walls and borders and uh, all that that uh, they are so upset about. So it should be something that is attractive to both left and right because we're not saying that the final resolution is X, Y, or Z. We're saying that's up to you. All we want is for the Palestinians finally, after a century, to come to terms with Israel. We welcome everyone to join this effort, but we ourselves do not take a position on borders, resources, sanctities, and so forth. We remain neutral. So we had a big uh, dispute in two weeks ago between the prime minister and the defense minister. We stay out of it. The education minister, we stay out of it. We're glad that victory is being discussed, but we don't take a side in it. Uh, the second point is that Palestinians gain yet more than Israelis. Think about it. Israel is a flourishing country. You live here, you know that. I could cite you all sorts of statistics about happiness surveys, water, demographics, extraordinary rise in the Israeli birth rate, um, culture, rule of law, and so forth. Standard of living. Uh, Palestinians, need one say more, do not benefit from all those attractive qualities that Israel has. Only by giving up their historic, irredentist claim to this entire territory, only when they recognize <coughs> excuse me, the Jewish state of Israel can they begin to develop their own polity, economy, society, and culture. So long as they are focused on the negative goal of eliminating the Jewish state, they will remain oppressed, backward, and poor. The only way forward for them is to acknowledge the permanence of the Jewish state of Israel. And the interesting thing is that this seems to be in the air, not among Palestinians so much as among other Arabic-speaking and some non-Arabic-speaking Muslims. Uh, the, as I like to put it, Israel now has better relations with Saudi Arabia than with Sweden, better relations with Egypt than with Spain, uh, possibility of diplomatic relations with Bahrain, the president of Chad, Azerbaijan. <clears throat> uh, things are changing on the Muslim side. The flip side of that, I might add, is that the left is becoming ever more hostile to Israel. So you have Mohammed bin Salman on the one hand as a representative of the new Arab thinking, and you have Jeremy Corbyn on the other hand as representative of the new British thinking. Uh, not everything is going in Israel's favor, but there is a, an atmosphere of openness to Israel that has not existed in the past. So, the deflation of Palestinians, Palestinian ambitions is necessary for them to build their own polity, economy, society, and culture, to cultivate their own garden, to build something worthy of a skilled and dignified people. So long as they have this notion that they can win, that they can destroy, eliminate the Jewish state, there will be no progress. And as we saw, the past 25 years have not helped. Indeed, things are worse. What is euphemistically called the peace process should more accurately be called the war process. Things were better in 30 years ago, uh, 25 years ago, than they are today. Uh, in the Palestinian uh, polity. There is more aggression and more hostility and more, more arms than there were back then. So to conclude, um, our work is threefold. First, to convince Israelis that the only way to end a war is through victory. The second is to convince the U.S. government to endorse an Israeli victory. And the third is to convince the Palestinians that it's over. The war is over. They lost. Time to move on. Uh, towards this end, we have undertaken both intellectual and political goals. 
uh, on the political level, it's easy to point to the fact that we have 26 members of the Knesset who have joined the Is Israel Victory Caucus. We have 32 members of the current House. Uh, it will go down in January, but now it's 32 who have joined the Israel Victory Caucus there. We have spoken to many leading politicians. And then on the intellectual level, well, here I am talking to you. Uh, we are engaged in writing, in uh, commissioning uh, studies. Uh, we have a team in Israel that is headed by Danny Seaman, a uh, team of five that is working on the subject. We have a team of two in Washington, um, and we're trying to get this out as a subject to be debated. Uh, the, the basic idea is very simple. Israel wins, the Palestinians lose, as the title of this talk goes. But the implications are very large and uh, very contrary to the assumptions of conciliation, mediation, compromise, goodwill, and so forth. It is sometimes difficult to talk about victory and defeat, but yet there is no avoiding it. That's how wars end, through victory and defeat. International wars end through victory and defeat. There is no avoiding it. And what one finds is many efforts to avoid it, to finesse it, to find some way of reaching an agreement, of having other forces come in, of leasing, of splitting, it, but they won't work. So long as the Palestinians believe, and they do believe this, 80%, believe that they can eliminate the Jewish state of Israel, it won't come to an end. Now, the good news is that 20% of Palestinians do accept, historically and today. So the goal must be to increase that number from 20% to 40% to 60% uh, to convince the Palestinian people and their leadership that the path that they are now taking is futile, is not going to go anywhere, the only way for them out to prove their lives is to admit defeat, to acknowledge that this century-long conflict has come to an end. The emperor has signed the, well, he didn't, the, the, the Japanese government has signed the uh, acknowledgement of defeat. The war is over. Time to rebuild. Thank you. It truly was a very interesting lecture given there by Daniel Pipes, and it seems that his movement, the Israel Victory Platform, is gaining steam both here in this country and in the U.S. We will see how it shapes up. Anyway, that's all the time we have for you today. On Monday, December the 3rd, 2018, the 25th of Kislev, 5779, Hanukkah. Hope you're enjoying the first day of Hanukkah, the Festival of Light. And only good things to all of our listeners, wishing everyone who celebrates Hanukkah a truly joyous holiday. My name is Josh Haston. This has been another edition of Israel Uncensored here on the Land of Israel Network at thelandofisrael.com. Get in touch with me during the week. Josh at thelandofisrael.com, on Facebook, Joshua Haston, and on Twitter at Josh Haston. Big shout out to my main man, Benjamin Bresky, for all the work he does in getting these shows up, along with Tabitha Epstein for everything she does to make our network grow and flourish. That's all. Most importantly, between now and when we speak again, please God next week, everyone out there in the wonderful world of ours, be safe. Shalom, shalom from beautiful Israel. Hi, this is Josh Haston, host of Israel Uncensored. And on behalf of all of the show hosts here, we want to wish our listeners all over the world a happy Hanukkah and all the best from Jerusalem. Happy holidays from the team here.